Hello and welcome to our patch management video. Today we're going to go through the patch management process, how to actually configure and manage patches as well as deploy them. So we're going to start off by going into our applications area and launching Endpoint Manager. Expanding the menu down the side, you'll make it a bit easier to see. You'll see we have a area called applications. In there you'll find an area called patch management. Now clicking on that there, it will take you to your uh, patch management screen where you can see patches for operating systems and patches for third party applications like Google Chrome and Adobe Reader. Today we are only going to look at the operating system side. Currently in our environment, we only support Microsoft Windows um, and the relevant patches for that operating system. But watch this space as other OSs are coming online soon. So as this is a Microsoft based patch management, as you can imagine, we've tailored it very similar to Microsoft's standard WUS system. So looking across our uh, system here, if I scroll down so you can see some examples of some patches, you can see we've got the names, the KBs, any bulletins, classifications and other information about the patches in question. Probably three areas to make relevant notes of are the not installed column, highlighted there, which you can see there's currently zero there, the installed column, which there is one, and the status column, which this status on this patch is declined. Now the reason these three are very important is because not installed is how many devices currently need this patch to be installed. The installed column is how many devices have successfully installed this patch. So having a quick look at that tells you where you need to focus your energy. Now all these columns here are searchable or sortable should I say sorry not searchable. Um, so you can sort them by clicking once twice to take, take them from ascending to descending making it easier to find. So if I do that on the not installed column once puts it in the ascending order and again puts it in the descending order, which is probably the most useful because it puts your most needed patch at the top. So now we know what data we've got. Something to look at then is our automatically approve area here, which is a nice little toggle button. By default in Iterian, we automatically approve all patches that Microsoft release. This might be good if you're a small MSP or want to trust Microsoft and their releases. But if you want a bit more control, of course, we give you the ability to do so. So you, we then give you the option to turn off automatic approval, which will re reload the page. And now any new patches released from Microsoft will not automatically be approved, meaning you have to manually go and approve or decline them. Now, just so you can see what that looks like, if we scroll down here, down the status column, you'll see the patches that have been automatically approved state as such, ones that have been manually approved also say as such, and of course any declined ones like these two here will say declined. Now the big thing to note here then and be totally aware of is a patch will only be available to install if it has been approved. If it's not been approved, no patch procedure that runs on a schedule will run. If, if it won't be there, if, if it's not been approved, it won't happen. Uh, the same as if it's been declined it will not be available for that schedule to install. So how do we approve and decline? It's very, very easy. 
you tick the one or multiple patches you wish and you choose either the approve or decline buttons at the top. So if I hit approve here, you'll see it now changes to approve at the top and it's ready to go. So on our next patch installation process that we tell it to run under our schedule, that patch will then install on any devices that require it. In this case, there are zero, so no, no real effect. So let's turn that back on just so I can show you that even with our automatic approval on, if you wish, you may override the automatic approval with an approve or a decline still. So if I decline this one here and scroll down, you'll see we've now got a decline there instead of an automatic approval. Once a patch has been automatically approved, it will never be automatically approved again. So the only way it can come out of declined is to manually be approved. So what other functions do we have here? If we tick the top patch here, we have a few options across the top. We can click install patches, uh, and it is patches uh, because you can have one or many selected. As you can see in this example here, it says there are no patches available for installation because I've selected one, but there's no available devices. So there's no need to do the installation. So that's an install. So if there was one, two, three devices there, all of those devices would get a command to go and install that now. So this is outside of the procedure or any schedule that you might have. This is a manual run now action. And of course, we have the opposite of the install with uninstall. Moving across the top, we have the option to hide patches, which would hide it from the operating system. So it also means they cannot install it using the normal Windows update functions. And of course, if you've hidden it, we can unhide it. We do have two buttons here as well for creating a procedure and scheduling your procedure. Now we won't use those two buttons here because there are better ways of doing it and it's much more easier if you see the full flow. So what we'll do now we know what we can do with our uh, actual patch management uh, area, we will go and look at patches on the device quickly to see the state of them. Then we will look at creating a procedure and scheduling it. So if I go and find a device, let's use the top one here. And if we click on patch management, you'll see we have a very similar look. We have operating system and third party applications. And in this scenario here, you can see all the patches are available for this endpoint all the various CVEs and KB numbers, etc. And probably most importantly is down the uh, end column here, you'll see that some are available, some are installed. Now, of course, if you just wanted to see the available ones, we do have a filter here, so you can then filter based on status and you can say available and then click apply that will then filter down to the available only patches so you can go in and manually install them and you can do that by clicking one or two or whatever here and choosing the install patches button once again this is a manual go do it now action and of course not only can we un uh, install we can uninstall So that there is the management of a patch via a device. But obviously all of this is very, very labor intensive. The idea of course of an RMM platform is to automate this process for you. And that's what we're gonna go and do now. 
So we'll start off by going to our configuration templates. We will go to our procedures area. And we will click the create button and we will choose a Windows patch procedure. So we tick that there. Let's go for um, critical updates as an example. So we'll go uh, can't spell. Here we go. Let's go YouTube critical updates. So we'll create that procedure and we'll click our edit button and go through the options. So we have our procedure name, description, let's say uh, demo for YouTube video. We can choose a folder to make it a bit more easier to find. I'm just going to leave it in the top folder. And then we have some useful information down here about alerting. Now we do have monitors we can create to do alerts or various patching information. But we also give you the option to apply alerting straight to this procedure in question. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this off because we've got we got it already monitored in our environment. So let's go to our execution options. This is what this procedure is going to target when the schedule happens. So these definitions all come from the standard Microsoft layout. Um, should be very similar to the WUS layout if you've ever used Microsoft WUS. So as you said, or as I said, sorry, we are going to do the critical updates. So we're going to tick our critical updates there and we'll also enable our critical security updates. And that's all I want it to run. And the reason I'm going to do this is so I can show you about having multiple procedures that you can schedule at different times because you might have, say, the uh, feature packs. You might only want to run them once a month. Where critical updates, you might want to run daily. So now I have my uh, execution options chosen. I'm going to go and look at my restart control. Now, suppress the reboot. That's perfect for me. I don't want to force anybody to reboot, especially if we're going to be doing this during the day. So I'm going to hit the save button. And that there is my critical updates added and created. So now we need to schedule this. So we'll go to our profiles area. We will go and we will choose a previous uh, profile we've already got. Now just a very quick recap. The procedures area here is found under device. Device, as you can see, is paid options, and it's an option there called procedures. So we turn on the procedures, and it appears at the top. So if I click on that there, it will take us to a procedures area. As you can see, we already have a patch in there. But what we'll do, let's edit and let's remove this, so you can see this being added from scratch. So if we click the Add button, Record ours YouTube test, and there we go, YouTube critical updates. And it tells us it's a patch where you'll find there's other ones here where it says script because they are different types of procedures. Of course, a script is a procedure type of anything you can imagine. So anything that you can code or download from our library is once again something else you can schedule. So be it maintenance windows that you want to turn around and clean up hard drive space, temporary internet files, bits like that. You can make procedures to do that and schedule them in the same way I'm doing this. So I'm going to choose our critical patch. I'm going to say the start date is today. And I'm going to change my schedule to daily. Just so you can see, if I click on the weekly, you'll see we have days of the week which you can select. And if I click monthly, you get a big chart, which includes the first, last, and everything in between. Just select the relevant days of the month. 
but of course be wary that the first on one month will be maybe a Monday, on the next month it may be a Tuesday or Wednesday, we don't really know because every month is different, so if you want it on a particular day to happen, make sure you use the right filter. So I'm going to choose daily, and I'm going to say let's go for 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So I am going to choose no end settings on this particular one. Reason being is I don't want to forcibly end the process or stop the um, schedule working. I want it to be all the time without fail, without any interruptions. I do not want to uh, apply this uh, procedure to run automatically when I add a new device, so I'll leave this one unticked because that could be dangerous, say so you, you enroll a new device into your platform you're applying this profile and immediately it starts doing Windows updates probably not helpful if you're trying to set things up on people's desks and things like that uh, you want it to type of happen on the right schedule at the right time so it doesn't cause disruption but something I would recommend is skip the procedure if the device is offline. The example I always give here is, say somebody goes on holiday for a week, the last thing you want to happen is them to come back on a Monday morning and they're sat drinking coffee all morning because their PC has six or seven different schedules of Windows update to happen. So once again, it's being sensible to make sure that your users are not impacted once you're happy with your settings, you click add, and it adds it to our list. Once you hit save, that is now in concrete on the profile, and it tells you when you added it to the uh, profile, so you have some form of auditing. Now that there is our patch process uh, scheduled and automated, Thank you for watching. That's all we got time for today. Please keep tuned on to the channel as more coming. Thank you.